Hi everyone, welcome to this month's business risk review for November. Sorry, not this month, we're in December already. It's been a long year. Looking forward to getting stuck into the details today. Um, it's very promising. I can feel just from, you know, anecdotally speaking, chatting to clients, chatting to suppliers, our own customers, et cetera. Um, certainly Creditor Watch is on, sorry, the economy is on the up. Um, people seem quite confident. People are doing more business. I feel like Aussies typically switch off around Melbourne Cup, first, uh, first Tuesday, in November and a fairly relaxed through to Australia day. I think that'll be very different this year. We've got a lot of making up to do. So it feels like they'll be working, a lot of people will be working right up until Christmas, which is good, and um, and and back and at it pretty quickly in July, uh, sorry, in January. I will get my act together. I'm a little bit all over the place, apologies for that. Um, so today, looking at the business risk review for November, as always, really quick introduction to Creditor Watch for those that are new to Creditor Watch, to our webinars, to our mailing list, um, or even those who need a bit of a refresher around who we are, what we do. We are a credit reporting bureau in commercial data, over 50,000 customers across Australia, and we provide a wide range of products. We've got a quite a nice product suite displayed here, which talks about everything from our onboarding and uh, client acquisition um, platform called Apply Easy, all the way through all of our assessment tools, including credit reports, monitoring and alerts, our brand new risk score, and a number of other products in there. And of course, the ability to analyze through portfolio health checks, data logic. It's a huge amount of products there, great features. I'd encourage you to jump on the website and have a look or have a chat to one of our um, you know, brilliant BDMs or customer service managers who can help you understand you know what it is that credit watch has and what it is that um, we can potentially provide you and, and and help you out within your business be it from an automation um, and integration tool or just simply a better way of assessing credit risk some key highlights so obviously today we're talking about data and data insights this gives you a really good understanding of you know where we are getting that data and, the, and our capacity huge amount of data sources public private and government data sources um, we've got 50 plus and we're finding new ones all, all the time we can report on every entity in australia so not just proprietary limited public companies we can do trust partnerships and sole traders as well um, a big amount of information coming in from zero myob and also our age trial balance program people uploading their age trial balance or connecting to their accounting software allows us a really great deal of information from a receivables perspective so we can start to talk about and show you exactly how an entity pays their bills and and, and what that trend is looking like up down or neutral the business risk review so what is it exactly so we're collating all of that data that i've just sort of touched on um, specifically looking at asic afsa australian business register courts um, debt collection notices receivables information of course Plenty of data that comes from our customers as well, um, and ultimately, before we get stuck into it, um, you know what what are we seeing? What are we feeling? So, you know, the latest review, and, and we've just released it today out to media and and onto our website. So, I encourage you to, of course, jump online to our blog, click on the blog, and you'll be able to see the release and the article itself. Um, importantly, payment times are falling across most industries. Um, a, a huge chunk of them anyway. And um, we're, we're still seeing a, a reduction or a, a decrease in, in administrations despite everything that's going on. So eventually we know that that will pick back up. But all in all, it's a really positive risk review this month. And it has been for a couple of months now, which is nice. You know, a one-off month doesn't make a trend, but um, two or three certainly does in my mind, at least. There might be some statisticians out there that disagree with me, but the fact is we are, as a nation, um, most industries, even those you know that have really done it tough in you know arts and tourism, hospitality, that sort of thing, are moving in the right direction, and we're seeing you know big big improvements from where we were, particularly at the peak in sort of June and July. Um, of course, the GDP latest GDP figures came out, which sort of complement you know our um, our results here, or, or vice versa. Three point three percent increase, which is fantastic, officially taking out us 
out of recession. Um, there's a lot of calls to, to review how a recession is measured. However, um, it's certainly a really good sign for the country and for the economy. Um, and we've seen um, quite a, a step change downwards from an unemployment perspective. And hopefully that continues um, through over the next, you know, over the next months and, 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 and 12 months ahead. And we get back to somewhere where we were back all the way back um, in, in Feb and March. Um, you'll, you'll notice in the release as well, there's a bit of a discussion around when um, the government should ease up on, on stimulus. Um, we are living in a synthetic world at the end of the day. So I think that's really important that we remember that. Um, you know, job keeper, job seeker is, uh, is providing a cash, cash rich environment. And, and of course, Safe Harbour is keeping plenty of businesses out of administration. Um, and there's, an, there's certainly an argument to suggest that there will be a number of companies in there that are trading insolvent, racking up additional debts and potentially putting pressure on their creditors, on their suppliers, um, when that all comes to an end. Um, we hope to see that sooner rather than later, but of course, um, you know, we've just got to watch, watch the media, watch the government and, and see what they say. So let's get stuck into the best performing industries. So mining, as it has been, agriculture, forestry, forestry and fishing, um, and information, media, and te telecommunications. These have been the three, three of the best performing industries throughout the whole of um, this this COVID period, from you know sort of late March through to current day. Um, we've seen still improvements versus um, 2019, which is fantastic. Um, and then if you're looking at October, it is fairly flat as well, but it doesn't get much better than sort of seven, eight, 11 days. If you, I think if you if you're keeping it under 14 days overdue, you, you, you're doing a fairly good job there. Most impacted industries, uh, transport, postal, and warehousing. And there's been a bit of um, talk about this or questions that I've that I've fielded. Well, hold on a second. E-commerce is booming. Um, how how is it that you know they are struggling so much? The fact is that there's a lot more to transport, postal, and warehousing as an as an industry. If you jump on on the um, ANSIC or if you have a look up the ANSIC codes, I think with ABS you'll see that a, a number of other um, you know, industries come into it other than just um, what you're buying from the iconic or via Afterpay. Um, a lot of that includes um, transport, um, be it on, you know, people via, you know, uh, planes, trains, automobiles, buses, that sort of thing, but also freight. We know that there's a reduction in freight that's going around as consumption has, has dropped. And, um, and also importantly, um, you know, B2B couriering and, um, uh, and transport that way has certainly dropped significantly. And that's putting a big, um, uh, that, that's ultimately what is putting a lot of pressure on that particular industry. So huge, still up a huge amount compared to same time in 2019. Administrative, administrative and support services, this has been impacted quite aggressively. A lot of people have, a lot of companies, I should say, have stopped, um, you know, utilizing outside support services, administration, et cetera, brought it all in house or stopped doing it all together through reduced costs. And then healthcare and social assistance. Now, it's a little bit ironic um, that healthcare is struggling in um, the middle of a, a medical pandemic. The fact is um, the, a lot of elective surgery was either, was either put on hold forcibly or has been put off by, by people who are gonna wait until um, you know, the pandemic's either either done or, or at least in a better shape. The fact is people don't really want to be going to hospitals and clinics and whatnot with um, uh, coronavirus around. Um, it has also meant that, you know, anything not corona related has been affected. And that is ultimately why we've seen, um, you know, uh, an impact on this particular sector as well. So payment times month on month. So this is looking at October to November this year, you can see that the vast majority have seen a reduction, though there are a couple that have seen little blips. Interestingly, wholesale trade, arts and recreation have seen slight, slight jumps, but certainly doing better than they were um, earlier in the year. Um, and then other than that, um, administrative and support services, as I touched on, has had a huge increase there. It'll be interesting to see how that rates next month as well, whether it's just a one-off jump that we can see. But overall, we've seen improvements across the majority, the vast majority of the industries, which is certainly what we want to see. 
If we compare it to November 2019, of course, we're still seeing um, large increases across most. However, that that gap between how they were how that how that industry was paying their bills in 2019 versus how they're paying now is certainly reducing um, every month, which is great to see. And I think it's important to talk about, um, you know, for some people, why why these payment times are, are so important. You know, in 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 current in current Sorry, in a normal economy, you know, payment times are important. Um, in a in a pandemic-induced recession, um, it, it, they become even more important. Cash flow is ultimately king. It's spoken about that way forever and a day. Um, and ultimately, if uh, payment times are are significantly extended overdue, it puts a lot of pressure on that particular supplier, and and in turn, that particular supplier struggles to make their own payments as well. So the effects are felt up and down the supply chain. Um, if we can get people paying on time or as close to on time as possible, it just provides more liquidity within the economy, within the supply chain, ensures businesses can make their own payments and also gives them the confidence to start investing that as well, which again, voids the economy even further. So keep an eye on these. We certainly want to get them down further and further. If you are exposed to specific ones, um, do take note. But I'm sure you have already done that given most of these have been like this um, since April when, uh, when the effects of COVID were certainly felt. Court actions, again, we know that court um, activity it, overall is down significantly bar WA, which is nice to see. Um, not that we want to see it increasing, but it's nice to see that it is it is sort of in line with uh, pre-COVID times PC. New South Wales, 45% down. Um, court actions in Queensland down 43% and Vic 7.9%, which is quite interesting. So it's always good to have a look at these stats. It's good to know that our court's getting back to normal. Of course, we know that with the insolvency laws in place, um, statutory demands and 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 therefore court actions and whatnot are either slowing or being slowed. And then of course there's the normal COVID restrictions and or court closures that have um, that have meant that there's a big build up of court actions within the system as well. Looking at external administrations, again we've seen another drop. I never thought it would be possible to continue to see drops, but we have seen another drop in November in the number of administrations that have taken place. Obviously, see back in back in March here, um, we were over that 800, which is that you know that eight to 900 is kind of the 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 number that is um is the norm. Bar you know December and Jan, or particularly Jan, you can see it drops away there just due to a lack of um you know lack of people around and. Uh, Courts being closed, administrators, etc., insolvency practitioners being on holiday—that's to be expected. But um, it, you know, there was that immediate drop um, into April as a result of the safe harbour provisions that were introduced. A bit of we started to head back towards normalcy, um, but again, that fell away very quickly once Victoria went back into its second lockdown. Um, we've seen it continue to drop down, and ultimately, the big question is. What will it look like when safe harbour provisions come to an end? Now, the discussion is that safe harbour will likely be um, will likely end on 31st of December. However, there will be um, a, a pseudo or a faux safe harbour in place with the SME insolvency reforms that are coming in as well or expected to be passed and come into law from 1st of January, which allows at this stage, what it looks like, it allows a, a, a business with debts of less than $1 million um, to, up, to at least apply for or, or, or make contact with or engage a, an insolvency practitioner. And that essentially will give them about three months of leeway to actually um, uh, continue to trade insolvent and or operate um, the business um, under, under that sort of protection. So. Um, while that, well, that's the sort of expected um, determination, I still think that there is a high chance that they just extend Safe Harbour overall to the end of uh, end of March, um, just to give businesses and the economy that little bit of an additional security blanket. 
do I agree with this? No, I don't. I think we need to, you know, come to terms with the fact that um, we are living in that synthetic environment um, and we need to start getting back to some sort of normal, um, not some sort of normal conditions around, you know, debts and debtors and creditors and, and being able to chase debts um, the way that we used to be able to and forcing businesses to ultimately pay their bills. And if they can't, well, then questions need to be asked about the viability of those companies as well. We don't, what we don't want to see is um, these so-called um, zombie business or, or, or in particular businesses that, that are um, consciously out there trading insolvent but continuing to, to rack up bigger debts, bigger debts, bigger debts that ultimately have no chance of survival past the safe harbour provisions. And when they go down, we're going to see a lot of pressure put on their suppliers, a lot of pressure put on their creditors. Um, that in turn could create somewhat of a domino effect. So, um, you know, my, my hope is that Safe Harbour does come to an end. Um, there will be protection for those smaller businesses out there in the form of that new SME insolvency regime that is coming into place. Um, and then, of course, we've got uh, the JobKeeper uh, that will reduce from January onwards as well. And, and, I, and I hope it will be interesting to see what they, what they do with that, whether that ends in March as well. But um, I think from a Safe Harbour perspective, we, we need to start getting back to the real world um, of, of, of trading. Um, and until that Safe Harbour provision is removed, it is very difficult for creditors out there to really, really confidently assess the viability of the debtor that they are doing business with. Um, but of course, watch this space, as we've been saying for quite some time, and we know things can change very quickly, but at this stage, everything is looking very positive, which is, um, which is fantastic to see. So just looking at some of those numbers, month on month, so October to November 2020, administrations fell 9.6%. Um, year on year, they are still down 57, almost 60% there. And that is, that is fairly consistent. We're at that 55 to 60% down year on year. If I was to call it zombie watch, the number of businesses that have not gone into administration or have avoided administration as a result of Safe Harbor when you compare it to a normal trading year, we're, we're sort of at that three and a half thousand, four thousand companies. And that's not taking into consideration the number of companies out there that have been affected by COVID and ultimately won't be able to trade in the future, um, regardless of when Safe Harbor comes to an end. You know, don't, don't, don't for a second think that all businesses are gonna come out of this and we're gonna get back to normal straight away. There will definitely be businesses that have been affected by COVID or there are, there are directors out there who have gone, you know what, I've done it tough for years and years and years as a small business owner. I'm done. I've had enough. This is this is ultimately the um, uh, the the straw that broke the camel's back, and I'm going to put the, the company into administration once Safe Harbour comes to an end. So, just having a look at I know that's the end there, but just having a look at 2021. You know what are expectations? Um, Look, data is is relatively positive, which is which is great, and it has been for for a few months now. Um, there's going to be you know bumps along the way, of course, and and we're seeing external external forces affect us that you know are kind of out of our hand, particularly when you look at um, the the tariffs um, and and the export bans coming out of uh, coming out of China. There's not really much we can do about that, and that's certainly going to affect some specific industries um, and or producers out there. Um, however, what we what we need to see um, is continued improvement month on month. December is always a big month for those who rely on um, you know foot traffic around retail, hospitality, bars, accommodation, etc. So they need all the help that they can get. But of course, everyone else is certainly playing catch up after what has been a very very tough um, and disruptive year. Um, I, I, for one, think that, um, you know, Safe Harbour will be extended. This new SME um, administration process will come into place and, and, and the Safe Harbour combined with that will allow them to, people to sort of test it out, so to speak. Those who, who, who are sick of, uh, you know, trading in a, um, you know, almost being in a, in a trading hold, so to speak. Um, and then from March, the question is, will there be a March cliff? And I don't think there will be. I think the government will either bring forward or push out, you know, one or more um, 
bits of support and stimulus at that stage to ensure that that you know second wave or that wave of insolvencies, I should say, doesn't occur. Um, they have done a they have done a great job, but there's still plenty of work to do. Um, as I said earlier, I encourage you to jump onto creditorwatch.com.au. Um, you can actually see the data on the business risk review website, which is fantastic. You can see how it's trending up or down, having a look at specific um, data sets, industries, even states. So it's a nice interactive um, uh, web page there that uses a lot of the data that I have spoken about. And of course, the other thing to look at is on the blog, jumping on and having a look at the business risk review itself. Um, We've had plenty of companies that we've spoken to who've started to utilize either some of the slides I've just shown or some of the data that I've just spoken about within their own sort of intercompany or intracompany, I should say, um, communications, particularly within the credit finance and executive team. It's great for um, managers and, and, and senior execs and whatnot to, to be educated about this, to know, to know what's coming and also for them to be able to talk about it if they have to present to boards large clients, suppliers, et cetera. So feel free to get in contact with us if you would like um, to utilize any of that. Um, and before we head off, I'd like to give everyone the opportunity to let us know, would you like to be contacted or not? So I'll just launch a quick poll. Um, feel free to say no, of course, um, but if you do, it would be, um, it's, it's great for us to, to be able to target our questions. All right, great. Thank you everyone uh, for joining me today. I hope you got something good out of it. As always, don't hesitate to contact us if you do have any questions. Um, it's been great having you join us and um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. I do believe we have another webinar coming up. Um, and if, I, if you don't join then, please do have a, a safe Christmas and a fantastic new year. And hopefully we'll chat to you in some shape or form in 2021. Thanks everyone.